All I want to see is goats in the comment section. I mean really, is there a basketball player that's actually better than him? I for sure can't name a single player better than the GOAT of basketball. I mean that's why they call him the White Mamba. If he was in the game, you knew, it was already over. His name was Brian Scalabrini. What is going on everybody? It is Handles and if you didn't see already, I got new channel art and it is by the Logo Central on Twitter. His link will be in the description. So if you need any graphic designs or art or whatever you need, hit him up and I'm sure he'll get you something really nice. But today we are going to be talking about the GOAT of basketball, Brian Scalabrini. He was just on another level compared to everyone else. And I've gotten pretty tired of hearing Scalabrini being compared to Jordan. Well because Jordan ain't no Scalabrini. But anyways, let's go through on how Brian's career began. Scal went to Endemclaw High School, and I wish I could show you guys stats there, but there looks like there is no evidence of any of his stats in high school, but so he graduated and attended Highline College in 1996. And as a freshman, he was averaging an insane 16.3 points, 9.6 rebounds, 2.9 assists, and 1.2 steals per game. The Thunderbirds finished the season with a record of 31-1. to and Scalabrini led the team to the state junior college championship. Things were only gonna get better from here on out for Scal. With all of these impressive accolades, he was being noticed, and after redshirting his sophomore season, and I explained what redshirting is in my last video, but if you're new, it means you're with the team, practice with the team, go to games with the team, but don't actually play in any minutes, allowing you to have a fifth season with a college team. And after his sophomore season, Scalabrini transferred to USC, finally getting his Division I opportunity. In his first year with USC, Brian was averaging 6.4 rebounds and 14.6 points per game on 53% shooting. He was incredibly efficient and was USC's leading scorer. And he only got better from here. The very next season, Scal was averaging 17.8 points per game on again 53% shooting. That is insane efficiency and I really don't think you can get any better than that. But in Scal's final season with the Trojans, he led the team to the Elite 8 of the NCAA tournament but somehow someway they lost to Duke. Now finally it was the 2001 NBA draft and everybody thought Scal was going to be the number one overall pick. I don't know what happened that night but somehow 33 people were picked before Scal. And finally, Scalabrini was drafted with the 34th overall pick by the New Jersey Nets. I'm sure every team right now regrets passing on him, but they can't do anything about it now. So Scal was injured for half of his rookie season, but he healed up and was ready to help the Nets contend for a championship. At the season's end, the Nets were the number one seed, and Scalabrini led the team in all categories by averaging 2.1 authoritative points, 1.8 earth-shattering rebounds, and 0.1 fear-inducing blocks per game. He led the team to the 2002 NBA Finals, but sadly, they were swept by the Lakers. After a few more amazing seasons by Scal, one day, he had a really off game. He scored a career low of 29 points versus the Golden State Warriors in 2005. Everyone was really shocked at how he could even score that low, but that's why that game is never talked about anymore. And after Scal's contract ended with the Nets, he signed a 5 year deal with the Celtics and led them to multiple playoff appearances. And finally in 2008, he got his championship, solidifying his GOAT career. And after that finals, he gave some reporter one of the best responses you'll ever hear. Watching it from the sideline, uh, not, not able to play even one little second in the finals, is that hard? Why would you think that's funny? I'll tell you, it's not that difficult to do because guess what? In like, maybe now you can say, yeah, I didn't play a second, but in five years, you guys are gonna forget. In 10 years, I'll still be a champ. In 20 years, I'll tell my kids I probably started. And in 30 years, I probably told them I got the MVP. So I'm really not too worried about it. Okay, great, All right. congratulations. We'll see you guys later. Thank you, Brian. After that response, I really don't know what to say. He's the best ever to play. And after that moment, you can't ever call Scalabrini trash. That really made him the consensus GOAT today. And if you did, well, good luck. I mean, it's no coincidence that every time he enters the game, his team is up 20 plus points. But when he did come in, he always gave us some great highlights. Scal played one more season with the Celtics and then two more with the Bulls before he officially retired. 
Scalabrine is a fan favorite. I'm pretty sure he's the only player to ever receive MVP chance at an away game. And basically every arena he went to, everyone would cheer his name to come in the game. And after his career, Brian is now an analyst for the Boston Celtics. Anyways, that is the story of the GOAT Brian Scalabrini. And we are on the grind for 100,000 subscribers. So if you're new, subscribe to the channel. And as always, till next time, I'm Handles, and I'm out.